Here we go with the grand finale of topic two, which is the end of 2.3. Make sure you have your Cambridge syllabus out with those learning goals because we are going to start right now. So we already went over tides and currents. That was in the previous video. We're going to continue a little bit with currents, which is the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect is the movement of currents, and that's due to wind, temperature, and density. In the northern hemisphere, currents move like a clock, so clockwise. Where in the southern hemisphere, they move anti-clockwise, so currents move opposite of a clock. So anti-clockwise, opposite of a clock or like we say in the States, counterclockwise. There are two conditions you need to know. You need to know El Nino and La Nina. When you think of El Nino, think the boy, and I like to say bad boy, just because it'll help you remember that is bad conditions that are caused. So it happens every seven to 10 years, and it's going to change the weather patterns in the Pacific Ocean primarily. Wind is going to move from west to east, which means from Australia to the southern um, east side of South America. So you can think that's going to be the west coast of South America, but it's moving from Australia towards South America. And what is going to happen is there's going to be upwelling that moves towards Peru typically, but under El Nino conditions, these currents that carry this cold nutrient rich water up stops. And that's because the wind is moving west to east. So that means there is no longer that cold nutrient rich water moving up. Instead, it's kind of stalling. Now, that means we're going to see a slowing or drastic decrease of primary production. So the producers, like any sort of algae or plants, they're not going to be able to survive in that warmer water. They're not going to be as active. This is going to cause a lot of death for cold water species because there's not a lot of life. Think primary producers feed the rest of the food chain and they feed the rest of the food web. So larger fish will not be able to feed on those producers, ultimately affecting the coastal communities. We like to call them local communities because they are the fisheries. They are the fishermen that are going out and catching fish. So if there is less producers because of warm water off the coast of South America, there's not going to be as many fish to catch. So what will happen is those local communities will be impacted because they will not have a food source. They will not have fish to sell. Also, it's going to cause warm, wet conditions in South America. So we could see mudslides. Now, in Australia, where the winds are coming from, they're going to have cool and dry conditions. While this sounds pleasant, it's actually a possible cause for more wildfires and droughts across Australia. So not a good thing. So El Nino, bad boy, warm water off the coast of South America, and drought conditions in Australia. La Nina the girl. So we're going to think good girl. And I kept it together because G, G, right? B, B, bad boy, good girl. So here, La Nina, it's going to be the opposite. So now that cold nutrient rich water is actually going to be pulled up the coast of South America, which means there's going to be a stronger trade wind moving from east and pushing that warm water across to the west, AKA Australia. Now we're going to have a much cooler than normal sea surface temperature. So that means the seawater is going to be much cooler on the surface during La Nina. Now what will happen is La Nina is going to allow for more primary production along that coast of South America, bringing up nutrients. So now we have more productivity, more fish. And of course, local communities and local fishermen are going to have more fish to sell, meaning local communities are going to profit from this cold water being pulled up from Antarctica. Now, in Australia, where that warm water is being forced over to, we're actually going to see that there is more wet and humid conditions over Australia. So there's going to be more rain, which is much needed for Australia because typically there's drought conditions. It's pretty dry. Now, 
The only thing about La Nina is as we have, this is the one bad part, as we have winds blowing from east to west, these winds will actually continue because the earth is round, will continue over Africa and cause a more active hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin, aka us here in Florida. So we're going to have a more active hurricane season because of La Nina. But overall, La Nina is going to be really good for South America and Australia. Also, we're going to see much lower sea surface temperatures, so it's going to be cooler, which is a good thing. All righty, everybody, that ends all of chapter two. Check those learning goals, and of course, if you find these videos helpful, like, subscribe,